Stan Lee. Stan Lee is always a win. Awesome tribute. Thank you, Stan. Uh-oh. We all know what dust means. Oh, cool. She's intact. Symbiote window shades. Wanna fight? There's your main motif for you. Getting knocked down and what the Kree don't realize about humans. And goodness, that's some stunning lighting for the sparring room. If you got a train, you might as well be bathed in marigold. Loving these visual hints that maybe the Kree aren't the most accepting people with giant propaganda billboards. The only way you get away with using the slow-mo hero walk towards a spaceship is by honoring the originators. Oh, good job. I laugh on the inside. I'm not doing that now. Look, no offense, but if you don't think Star-Lord is funny, sort of a new version of hologram tech looking all liquidy. Two more things in two seconds, tying us into Guardians Volumes 1 and 2 with hexagonal space jumping of Twizzler-looking Kree ships similar to Ronin's. That's, uh... Yup, that's a, see yup. Mohawks and slow-mo. It's a rule, look it up. Ultimately, I just think it's weird this guy isn't in Game of Thrones, but he still has a beautiful beard. How about I tell you my secret when you tell me yours? Okay, so other than the inability to see anything, goodness, this is just too dark. Whatever, it's a foggy planet, and we're supposed to be a little confused about who's who anyway. And it actually plays into the whole anybody could be a scroll, who are the good guys, bad guys theme that this movie is so much about. There's so many conflicting things happening, you leave this set piece, deliberately I presume, confused. It seems like killing these locals would be a bad play, but everyone's on edge, they're approaching the team, and then... They're just starving. <sighs> a sigh of relief. Someone with some sense. But no, he's a scroll. They're all scrolls. But what are they even doing? Was he really just trying to prevent conflict? We know now that he most likely was. But then Ben Mendelsohn, one of the greatest misdirect casts ever. I'll wait while you try to think of a time he was a good guy and then go to IMDb to check. And yup, I see you're typing the place beyond the pines. Yeah, no, I really think about who he was in that movie. Bad guys can still be decent people. If you'd said bloodlines, I might actually have given you a pass because it's complex, but come on. Comic book movie, comic book villain. Middle-aged British white dude is where it's at. And yeah, 60s is the new middle age, don't at me. Stand by. Done in camera with doubles and Annette Benning running around the other side of the camera. Look at that. For about a frame and a half, the true non scroll ears come through. <laughs> Intimidation. And resourcefulness. Well, if you want to give her credit for making him slam his head into the six stick, which I'm willing to do. Well, that's a new way to fly. Just hand propulsion. Well, organic hand propulsion. It's really only peppered throughout PNR Toprock's score, but you know I'm a sucker for a synthy electronic line. She created such a great mix of typical action music with this retro feel. James Cameron directed True Lies and was a writer on Alita Battle Angel. Captain Marvel's taking shots at Alita! And fun fact for anyone born after... I don't know, 2000? All those boxes are empty. You had to go up to the counter to get the actual VHS tape. Or actually, was that just a Hollywood video thing? I know once Blockbuster switched to DVDs, they were all on the shelf. I'm not sure. The lesson here is don't trust your memories? This one's taken. A little cliche-ish dodge. I mean, how often would that happen? More than zero, which is what most movies featuring shapeshifters would have you believe. Where can I find communications equipment? Ah, the old Game Boy payphone communicator life hack. All she's missing is a little hot glue and probably an empty toilet paper roll or something. Also, there's a scene with a deleted section coming up that people got a little upset about, but no one seems upset that Carol clearly just broke into the Radio Shack and stole a Game Boy. They weren't open and she doesn't have a Discover card. Also, oof, this is just a wall of nostalgia. I think Ace of Bases The Sign was the first CD I ever bought, but Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness may have been my most cherished. More wins for movie member berries. No regrets. But actually a possible stretch of a reference is that Envy Adams story concludes in book three, Scott Pilgrim and the Infinite Sadness. So there. Hey, Agent Coulson is looking disapprovingly in the direction of a bar called the Slow Club. He must hate all bars. See, logic jumps are dumb. You know anything about a lady blowing a hole through the roof of that blockbuster over there? Ha dang. Someone will undoubtedly lie and pretend like there's Uncanny Valley in Sam Jackson's face, and you can take solace in knowing that they're lying. That is pretty stinking flawless. Saving your future boss? Hardcore parkour! 
Stanley is still always a win and a little further confirmation of his true identity with an extraterrestrial recognizing him preparing for his movie role. Yes, a role that predates X-Men, I should have clarified, I meant that X-Men was his first Marvel cameo as the future Watcher informant. In Mallrats he plays himself, and was technically in a handful of other films before even that. <laughs> I know Carol has this whole cocky swagger thing that turns some people off, but it's kind of the point. How else do you assuredly deck an 80 year old lady? And again, who isn't assuming this is just New York performance art? Still nice of civilians to stick up for the elderly, but also nice of Carol not to break all their bones simultaneously, since clearly she could. Beautiful beard there on Bizarro younger Forrest Whitaker. Ooh, love that 90 degree camera whip with beers. Of course, Kelly Sue DeConnick is gonna be surprised to see a character she created just walking around a train station. Just when you think you might have found the thing that leads to him losing his eye. All bloodshot. It's the right eye even. Well, left eye, I mean. I mean it's the correct eye. What says 90s more than Alta Vista and the song you've heard a million times, but when I say Connection by Elastica, you realize you have no clue and always just thought it was whole or garbage. And then I tell you the opening riff was stolen from Wire's Three Girl Rumba, and your head explodes. Nice scuba suit. Compliments, moving on. Although she should be happy Warlow didn't use his fairy vampire powers on her. Or I don't know, that Chuck didn't have his Jaeger with him. See, now Elastica's making it so you don't have to worry about Grand Theft Auto. I'm only happy when it you know, I didn't even, I didn't know Garbage would be the next song. Hey, Garbage is a win. An absolute wife win, to be more precise. Oh, come on. Street Fighter 2 is always a win. An M. Bison's torpedo attack thing that looks suspiciously like something Carol will do later. Psycho, torpedo, all his moves were psycho something, right? Psycho Crusher, that's the one. Oh, my AOL password? It's password, stop lying. I'm not about to stop. TLC, man. Yeah, it's it's fan service. It's all fan service nostalgia okay. member berries. Doesn't mean featuring waterfalls in your 2019 movie isn't gonna get you a win. You know this. You know this to be true. Race of noble warriors. Heroes. I'm gonna get into it a little, Heroes. well, a lot more later, but you have to remember that arrogant lines like that, that probably make some of your stomachs turn, are part of the evidence that she's on the bad guy's team right now. She doesn't know it, but they clearly see themselves as the saviors of the galaxy. Read Ethnic Cleansers of the Galaxy. Everybody calls me Fury. Ha, <laughs> unless you're Robert Redford giving subtle hints you're a bad guy. Good continuity retcon lineup there. You should see what I can do with a paperclip. Or a lightsaber. Cool name for a cool cat. I'm not especially a cat person, but everyone agrees orange cats are the best. And all you had to do was... I did want to steal your thunder. See, now that's just a nice courtesy. Politeness. The Kevin LaRosa, who's been in nine MCU movies plus Kong Skrull Island with Brie, and will be in the Top Gun sequel? Probably just a coincidence. You okay? Probably the biggest complaint about Brie is that she plays Carol Flat. And while I actually understand why she would, okay. she has conflicting motivations and she's uncovering her personality at the same time we are. She does emote, it's just okay. often subtle. Silent glances like this speak volumes. She's not okay, but at this point still needs to keep that tough guy facade up because she still has no clue who to trust. I mean, even Fury is acting suspiciously at this point. What separates her from recruit training comes in a minute. Excellent work, Nicholas. <laughs> as close as Sam Jackson gets to dropping an F-bomb in the MCU. No, I think it's closer than when he gets dusted. But there's actually two callbacks to earlier information here. The Nicholas thing may have just been an oversight from Talos. But then Fury tests him on an older memory since Veers said, Scrolls can only sim recent memories of their host bodies. Which Spy-Man Nick remembered. Like we didn't know Cliche dodge. How many times have you heard, but we were never in Havana? As the protagonist undoes all his sneaky sneaking for an aha moment in the bad guy's face. Is it something I said? You know, I've got to give them credit for making a fight between a 60-year-old and a... 71? Samuel L. Jackson is 71? What? What? How did that happen? And this fight is solid and fast-paced. Even if, come on, Fury, the light came on from your right, meaning there's a dude to your right, and then you dropped the mag but still tried to fire it with the slide locked back? It's almost like... It's almost like you're a little green. Hmm. Oof, brutal move. But they do kind of complete the look. <laughs> Scrolls are Australian. Just yeah. noticing that. They're not down here. And now we know why Fury trusts Colston so much. See, filling in all not the blanks. Here. Mostly from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a good show, don't at me. I guess he had a feeling. It's a really hard thing to do, but it keeps us human. I get in trouble for that. And that was the moment where she went against her training, followed her instincts, and made a decision that put her own life in danger to save someone else. Which isn't a Cree teaching, at least in the context of killing all scrolls. Put your people's needs before your own. And your own needs being, you know, 
trusting your heart and not killing scrolls just because. A cell of scrolls is a threat to Kree everywhere. I see Roan Hitler got his bigotry started early. Desiree telling us all the things we gotta be. Also, while most of the songs so far have been female anthems, Veers is wearing a Nine Inch Nail shirt. Well, that's a shortcut cheating. Since it violates the predetermined rules of engagement, I definitely don't remember those. Mm. Obviously, for Maria, sitting down and chatting with her best friend would feel pretty close to normal. But there's a certain connection between them that you can feel goes beyond Carol's missing memories. Both actresses sell it really well. Everyone's been calling this a Pulp Fiction reference, which is fine, Jules is in this, but that's the exact cup from Reservoir Dogs, and confirmed by the directors. And who is that out there? Okay, that's a fair point. Admitting when you're being bad guys. And I'm gonna put my foot in the place it's not supposed to be. Am I supposed to guess where that is? Your yes. ass. <laughs> that's a clarification okay, win. Uh, hmm. some of you know what's relevant here, others, actually probably the majority of you don't. You know what, we'll just leave it at that and throw a win up there because Cryptic is my middle name. My real name is Marvell. I really don't hate Marvell being changed to a woman because it means that in the MCU the whole line is women now and will probably stay that way considering Monica's interest in building spaceships. Not the craziest surprise, but still a solid reveal. I'd assume Jude's the good guy all day over Ben. Yep, on that slow motion insanity which is some solid self-sacrifice. Ah, the old V'ger trick. A Kalima, if you will. Or for the most refined palettes, safe hold. Man, that, that one was a bit of a stretch. And you were the most powerful person I knew. Look, show don't tell is a rule to live by in a visual medium. I will give them just the teensiest of passes here because one, Lashana Lynch makes me believe everything she says, and two, I think Carol is supposed to be somewhat unlikable up to this point, and it visibly breaks her to learn she's no longer who she used to be, and even more importantly, that she's loved don't see a lot of expressions of love on Hala. I'm also hugging. We discovered that your energy signature matched Marvel's core. So right about now you might be thinking, but how did you know she would be on the mission to Torfa? I'll admit it's not super clear in the movie, but Talos was simming Solar, a spy whose brain he'd clearly mined for information. Who's to say he hasn't been Solar for years, or that there isn't another scroll or multiple scrolls in the Kree high ranks? But forget that. What matters is that Talos knew everything a Kree spy knew and could have likely requested the team with Veers on it. You anticipate hostile encounters with a technologically superior foreign enemy. That's what I'm saying, you have to go. Monica. You have a chance to find the coolest mission in the history of missions. <laughs> the actress who plays Monica is great in this film, but I just have to point out that she might have the coolest name ever, Akira Akbar. Come on. You're gonna give it up to sit on the couch and watch Fresh Prince with me? Yeah, no, you should do that. That's a better use of your time. In case you're questioning why she'd keep that symbol on her uniform, it's not THE Kree symbol, it's just her rank in Star Force. They all have different ones. And now it's Captain Marvel's symbol since she made the gold bars stretch out to the side. I already have one of those. Oh wait, that's not an Iron Man reference, that's a Shazam reference. Oh, we, we already have one of those as well now too. We don't have one of those, but I really wish we did. Yeah, he's more black and purple now, but keep trying. Hulk? Are those close enough to Genusville's colors? Nah, it's OG Marvel. How do I look? Yeah, that might do. His contract's up. Fresh. Ha, because of the prince. Honestly, this suit is fantastic. Who do I see when I commune with the supreme intelligence? You would never tell me who. She knows. I'll give Jan Rogerdog a little deductive reasoning win. For him to know that information, she'd have to have told him willingly. Do you just turn into anything you want? Can you all do it? Yeah, but uh, it takes practice and, um, dare I say it, talent. <laughs> You can have that one, Ben. You've got talent. Just normal, like, space turbulence? Pretty much. Honesty. Good choice. Fawn's gonna handle it. He didn't come here for the Tesseract. Up until this moment, I was still a little on edge about Talos. What can I say? Ben doesn't exactly put you at ease. But this revelation, well, it's, it's just about the sweetest thing. I'll admit, not every song choice is perfect. But this eerie Nirvana fade-in is spot on. Ooh, that's a nope. You don't face catch punches. My name is Carol. Heck yeah, heck yeah. These images of Carol throughout her life standing back up. All these flashbacks that were presented as failures in her life earlier. The Supreme Intelligence was specifically using them as examples of weakness. To turn them on their head to show that they were actually moments of triumph. Moments when she didn't quit, she got back up. Heck yeah, you must feel that. It doesn't matter what you think about the actor, even if you think Carol is too cocky. This is human resilience, perseverance, determination, tenacity. It is the state of inflexibility in the face of insurmountable odds 
that we all strive to attain. And it's Steve Rogers' tagline. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I can do this all day. Carol's by no means the first hero to do this. What I'm saying is that this is Marvel right here. This is what it is to be a hero. They don't give up. If this is musical, visual, or even editorial manipulation, color me happily manipulated as not even a member of the target demo. The Kree wanted to crush her emotion because they knew she was more powerful than them with it. And I mean, binary. Goose was grooting before Groot was an acorn in his father's... Uh... Maybe Just a Girl wasn't the exact right choice if you're going for an epic showdown, but that's not really what the scene is. This is the invincible girl realizing she's invincible and it's supposed to be a little goofy. Plus, no doubt is always a win. I'm showing my hand a little in this video. Don't make me do this. Okay. And I don't hate her getting used to her powers. Just like a banner. Call back using your surroundings. I don't think we can ignore that in 1995, an alien ship chased a black pilot through canyons. And we know she's seen Fresh Prince, which means Will Smith exists in the MCU, and that means Independence Day ripped this dogfight from real life a year later. <laughs> ship punch. Yes, she's overpowered. It's a problem, but I just don't care. It's not like she's the first, and thank goodness, genuinely thank you, storytellers, for not concerning yourself with things outside of the story you're telling. I love seeing this. I mean, we all pretty much agree Superman is cool, I think. I love that we get to see heroes with unlimited power, at least from our current perspective. Unlimited power is only unlimited concerning other power. Yep. Yup to that sweet mohawk, yup to her blue, red, and gold glow. Yup to these visual effects with live action mix shots. Pretty sure this is the dictionary definition of catharsis. Yup to energy blast threats. Also, obviously she can't kill Ronan because he's got stuff to do. But if you're questioning why she blew up only one ship, I saw it as a demonstration. She's not looking to slaughter everyone, but of course she'll have no love lost for the race that enslaved her. We'll be back for the weapon, the core, the woman, and maybe just maybe a dance off. She's even given back to the grid. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> didn't expect that even the second time through. Expectation subversion. But like, who's gonna shoot at binary? Prove to me! You can beat me! <laughs> yes. Why? Why Why would she? I have nothing to prove to you. Oh, mother Haha, <laughs> <laughs> still think this look was closer, but that's a close second. Who would have thought a solo scratch would become an iconic look? But that's what you get when you trust cats. Maybe I'll build a spaceship. You don't know. He doesn't. Who knows? Sometimes you get too close to a pulsar and a photon gets ya. Or something along that spectrum. Marvel. It's pronounced Shazam. For emergencies only, okay? I like to think that Fury probably called her when Shatari started falling from the sky and Carol said, Oh, come on, you've got a Hulk and an entire team. You don't need me. And she was right. It's not until universe changing stuff happens that she agrees to help. Or maybe she was just busy. I've read complaints about the Lightspeed engine being a dumb MacGuffin because the portals seem like faster travel and. You're probably right, but Lightspeed is a standard sci-fi MacGuffin, so it just doesn't bother me. But also, there's nothing that says they're not using Lightspeed with portals. I think it's actually safe to assume they are, since that's how they travel. Guardians 2 makes it seem like the jump spots are spread out, and even in this movie, Pond Fog and his guys have to travel 22 hours to get to a jump spot. How far to C-53? Closer jump point is 22 hours. So, Lightspeed travel to there would be a lot faster. Did the Kree burn your eye out because you refused to give them the Tesseract? I will neither confirm nor deny the <laughs> Man, that makes so much sense. I was trying to snuggle an alien that looked like a cat because I'm a dumb human that can't separate appearance from reality and it scratched me. No, last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. Much better, very fury. And our one woman security force had a prior commitment on the other side of the universe. And helping an entire race find a new home planet is absolutely a good enough reason for her to be missing for the next few decades. <sighs> Another solo eye patch origin? Didn't Carol make fun of call signs in the comics? It's not a removal. It's still cool. Just me. Eh. Avengers' main theme is win. Duh. But not so much that it ruins it. Chill. Okay, so Captain Marvel has flashbacks almost to what a female-led Top Gun could or would be like, right? And the cat's name is Goose, plus, spoilers for Top Gun, I guess, Goose lives. So in the MCU, Goose is alive, and that's all there is to it. Oh, and how about these credits? Something else. Hole, the other band I unironically mentioned when talking about Elastica, helping out, obviously. But these are some artistic credits, as in filled with pieces of art. And if you want to make some art, I'm about to do a sponsorship read and I felt slightly icky about it being right here because it isn't usually and I'm not trying to trick you, so here's my disclaimer, you should check out this week's sponsor, Skillshare. 
But seriously, if you haven't already, you should, because with my vanity URL, you can get two months free. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, where have you been? Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in design, business, productivity, marketing, so many things, of all the things that you can use to move up in your career or start a new one. Speaking of design and these amazing credits, if you're interested in graphic design like me, you'll love George Bukua's logo design with grids. Because I love math and symmetry, and when mixed together with design, it's like a happy brain massage for me. And his course, well, it's the subtitle, creates timeless style from simple shapes. He takes you right from graph paper to illustrator and shows you how to create uniquely. And with a premium membership, you'll have unlimited access to all the classes for less than $10 a month. But, like I said, use the link in the description to get a two-month free trial. It really helps out the channel, and I know you'll find lots of things you're interested in as well. Link is at the top of the description. I know, weird spot for a sponsorship read, right? Okay, so my conclusion got out of hand, so I'm trying something different this week and, well, next week. I'm splitting the video right here, and the next video will be just the conclusion. I know some of you care less about that, so we're going to see how that works out. It'll still be called Everything Great About Captain Marvel Part 2 to avoid confusion, but a lot of my thoughts about this movie and why it is what it is and has been responded to the way it has are taking me a little longer than usual. So it's not exactly the same reason that I normally split up videos like Scott Pilgrim or Infinity War. And if this is a complete failure, I probably won't do it again. But next week will be that. <laughs>